So hello, welcome back to Accessible Photography. Last time I uh, was doing moon photography and I promised I'd do some star trails. So tonight is a good night for it. There's no cloud whatsoever. Maybe a slight haze up there, but I think it's very minimal. Already have one bright object in the sky and that's Venus. And that's really handy because it's, it's still quite late in the sky just now. It's now about half past nine at night, uh, but it is, the sun's gone down over there. North Star is up here, and I really want to be facing north, and I'll explain that later. But what I want to do is focus the camera and make sure everything's ready to go. So I can take that off of there, put the focus on, and because I've got a bright object of Venus, I can actually focus on the star and just see what it's like. So that looks good. I've done autofocus, switch it back off. But do we want to do the zooming in and see what it's like? So let's have a let's let's do it with the with the back screen. So, oh, wrong one. Turn right round there. So Venus is in here at that point there, and what I'm going to do is zoom in on that. That looks okay. Now. There's the focus ring here, out of focus, out of focus. So that smallest point there is where it's in focus. Okay, it's still locked off. Rotate back around to where I wanted to be. Oops, wrong one. And get the image I want. So I'm going to be looking from that direction there. I'm being very careful not to include uh, lit upstairs windows at the moment because that would just be wrong. So it's just pointing at the sky. I have set it to 3200 ISO f2.8. It's currently saying if I take an image 50th of a second and that looks okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my auto release, plug that in and wait for it to get dark. So I've got my auto release. I always check which way around it is. For Nikon, it says Nikon facing this way. Open the flap at the side and pop it in. Now the benefit of setting up before it gets properly dark is that you can see all this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trial this out. So take the, the camera off single and put it onto multi. Then I can lock that on. Uh -huh. Switch on. And I should get multiple images like that. And when you process those later, you blend them together. And then you should get the, star, the stars all moving. Uh, when it comes to being dark, it's not going to be a 50th of a second. It'll probably be a lot, lot less. And you might even get a slight movement in each individual image, which will just add to the whole thing. Okay. I'm going to hang that up so I know where it is. And I'm going to say good night. Well, not really. I'm going to go and have a beer. My lights are flashing again. There we go and I'm going to wait for it to get properly dark. See you soon. Well, I've uh, had a pint of beer and it's now 10 o'clock. And there's still too much light in the sky. So apologies, my uh, lights are flickering now and I can't stop them. It's not pulsing away, so it might be a bit annoying. Uh, okay, I've moved position slightly. It's now after half past ten. And I do actually have the image I want. I've had to get, put a wider uh, view onto this because the North Star is a lot higher than I'm used to because you usually do this in the winter. And in the summer, the North Star goes a lot higher. So I've changed what I've got a little bit. I've refocused to make sure everything's right. And now it's just time to go and uh, take pictures. So 
want to do. I've got my little release here. And I was going to show you a video through this of where the North Star is and how to find the North Star. I'm going to have to show you that another way because I can't get this to show the uh, show the stars clearly in the dark. So anyway, let's see what we do. We'll take one image and see what it looks like. That looks okay to me. Okay, I'm going to make it slightly brighter because it always looks good in the dark on the screen and when you get it back it looks terrible. So I'm going to go for two seconds f 2.8 there's a lot of stars there that looks good i can actually see venus in the corner of there as well let's uh, have a look i've got the what i believe to be the north star and the reason i go for the north star is everything circles on the north star so if you can get this circle center in your frame it looks good so let's see what we get so I'm going to start these off and I'm effectively going to be leaving the, ca the camera running for as long as possible through the night and hopefully nobody will steal it. And there we go. Okay, I'm getting some stars. So what I'm going to do is just take the F back down from 14, back down to 10, at 25 seconds. See how that comes up. So the basic, the wider the, the lens is, the less likelihood you'll get an actual trail in the image. Uh, but the longer you take the image, the longer you take the exposure, the more chance you have of that trail. So I'll just have a little look at these just now. Zoom in on that. And right in the middle, no movement at all. But in the far edges, there is in fact some movement. So that's going to help a lot. Yeah. So I'm just going to let this go and go in. See you later. Well, last night I set the camera up to take uh, lots of pictures and around about midnight I checked out the window and discovered it had actually clouded over. So I only got about an hour and a half, less than an hour and a half of images because after a while it just ended up with cloud. So my trails probably won't be as good as I would like. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. Uh, the first thing I realised is I've got a, a, quite a glow in here from the bedroom window. The children in this bedroom here have a night light on which is right in the window and it's all night on all night. So I'm just going to do a little crop in the corner here. Go from original and I'm going to go to 1920 by 1080p which is, or 1920 by 1080 which is equivalent to my video settings and this is what I usually crop to and I'm just going to take that in and get rid of the uh, as much of the glow as I can I'm just going to leave in the top of the house the aerial and the tips of the trees here and if I'm very lucky I've still got the pole star which it should be in about here and I'm just going to do that so a nice image there uh, let's see if I can darken that a little bit let's take the blacks down a little bit so we've got a nice dark sky with the nice white stars. Uh, leave the highlights down but take the whites up a little bit and see if the stars glow a bit more. So I don't want to take that too far, just a little bit. So I'm in Lightroom but what I'm doing is I'm actually editing JPEGs so there's very little I can actually do, very very little before we start getting lots of artifacts and this looks terrible. Now the one thing that you will notice with star photography is you will see far far more stars than on the image than you ever saw with your naked eye. So trying to spot constellations and the like is very 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 hard because they're all just blurred in there and I also find I've uh, managed to get a satellite in there as well uh, and that gives a nice flare because I will get the name of that in a second I can't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head there's a name for it and you get this flare that comes off the satellite as it goes overhead. 
and I've got one of those. So that will appear in the original. And what I've got here is the very bright Venus in the corner here. And that's going to sweep around a little bit as we go. So I've done one image there. I'm going to come back out and include. So what I'm going to do here is I'm taking the first image that I've adjusted, include them all, and then I should just sync settings. I've got everything in layer. I've included crop on here. The crop should come into effect. Synchronize. And they're all now changing to the settings that I created. Now you might not see it happen instantly, but it should be happening. And then what I can do is export the lot. So I'm going to click on this one, but I'm just going to export to the same place. And that will take a short while. It's 143 images being exported. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Well, you we might notice a slight change to the setup, and the reason being is the new Apple will not allow Star Slacks to be played on it. Uh, it's a known problem, and the guys that make Star Stacks, or the, the man that makes Star Stacks, is working on that. And he offered a trial uh, copy and said it should work, but it doesn't. Apple won't allow it. So I have gone back to my, my old Mac, be careful I don't cut myself, I've chipped the screen there, and have the images that I want, and I'm going to put them into here. Now what I'm doing first of all is there's a section here that you can set up, and there's a bit here marked Comet Mode. So I clicked on Comet Mode, short trails, long trails, I'll let it go right about the middle. I'm going to keep them in normal order. It says subtract dark images here. Now, the guys that do this properly, they will take basically blank images, as in put the lens cap on, take images and add those to what is here. Now, the reason being is that if there's any uh, hot spots on the sensor, they show up as a, a little white dot or a colored dot on a black image such as the sky. So when you do your trail you end up with stars that haven't moved and it's because they're not stars they're actually hot spots on the uh, on the sensor. Uh, I've not done that if I end up with hot spots I don't really mind uh, I'm just doing this for a bit of fun. So I'm leaving that alone. Uh, the images uh, smooth interpret interpolation, so it's fast, smooth, automatic. I'm putting smooth on, I have actually no idea what this does. The background, that's really just on here, so just leave that black. Use compression, uh, compression quality, I always go for best, just to try and get the best image possible to show, like yourself, what you can actually get. So that's fine, I've got that all there. I'm now going to select my images. Now, if I select all my images I'm going to end up with a poor image because I have cloud. I'm going to show you one of the images. So it clouded over and there's a couple of stars showing. Venus is still showing quite clearly there but the rest is just orange and the effect that has on your final image is going to be absolutely awful. So I've already checked and Four six five one is where I want to be. So four six five one is an image where the cloud is just coming in, but it's not going to affect my overall image here at all. So go from four six five one. No five five six five five six five one, not four six five one. Surprise! Actually, managed to get what I wanted there. Anyway, I've selected the images I want. I drag them over to where it says "Drop Images" here, because this couldn't be any easier. This simply could not be easier. So I've got my images in here, and then now the selection boxes along here are a little bit out of order and a bit confusing. You've got a folder. 
you've got an image here, I can't remember what that one is, open dark frames. Now we don't have any dark frames, that's fine. Then as a save, which is shadowed at the moment because, or shaded at the moment because it's, there's no point, we can't save anything. But this is the one where you do the work, so start processing. And this takes a while, so I will start this and we'll come back to you. So can I show a clock here? I was going to show you the clock so you can see. So at the moment it's 11.14. This is a much older computer. This is a 2011 model. Uh, I have boosted the memory a little bit, but it's not going to make it any faster. So from 11.14, I start. It's down here saying blending and gap filling, but it's going to take a little while. So I'll come back to you. So that finished, it's uh, now 11.17. It's not that long, it actually tells you how many seconds it took, but I missed it. And then I'm gonna do a quick save. So we'll do click save. And I'm gonna rename this. I'm gonna tell you I've cheated a little bit because I've done a couple of trial runs. So this is star stacks gap filling dash three. And let that save. That's it, that's okay, it's saved. Go down at the bottom here and the final image ta -da! there we are and i'm going to show you that on the screen so it's a trial it's it's playing it's learning about it i would say it's not as crisp as it could be my focus maybe wasn't a hundred percent but I'm, I'm quite happy with it you're going to get a little bit of movement in the trees because it is a slightly breezy day, so you will get a bit of movement there. If you can get just solid items like buildings, aerials, bits and pieces, it's a lot better. You will see things nice and crisp. If you look at the top, you can see that's the pole star. It's barely moved at all, shows how, much, how little the pole star does actually move. And you can't quite see it, but the iridium flare is in this area here and i'm going to show you that as a separate image because that's quite interesting but there is your comet effect star trails i hope you like uh, i will show you a little bit more about how to find the the pole star and that will hopefully be us but i like that well i did say i was going to show you how to find the north star and the North Star's proper name is Polaris. And to find it, you're looking in the north. And in the northern sky, you'll find a group of stars, a constellation, which is called Ursa Major. Now, it's also called the Big Dipper or the Plough. Now, you can see why it's called the Big Dipper, because it's, it's a bit like a big ladle or a, a dipper for water. And if you understand an old-fashioned plough, you can also see the plough shape in there as well. Now, if you don't understand stars very well, and I don't wish to be teaching anybody how to suck eggs, but the stars rotate around the, the northern star, the Polaris, which is how you get the image like this. So through the night, this will actually move, and it's going to be in different places, predominantly at a certain time, at different times of year. So if I bring on the next image, so this next image, the two images I have borrowed from the internet, Polaris is here. Now, when I was using Polaris last night at about 10 o'clock, it was sitting here, which is in the spring. In the winter, it's out here, the fall and the summer. Fall obviously being autumn if you're from the UK. But through the night, that will move a little bit. But just understand that in the spring, you're looking for it upside down in the sky and the way to find Polaris is quite simple here it is again here you follow the shape and these two stars here point directly to Polaris if you have Ursa Major it's on the tail of Ursa Major as I say I very rarely see this properly these stars are very very prominent and Polaris is about as prominent as these but maybe not quite so much it is a fallacy 
that the northern star, the pole star, Polaris, is a very bright star in the sky. A complete and utter fallacy. So don't look for the brightest star in the mid middle and think that's going to be the, 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 the pole star, because it's not. Find this, and all the stars you see here, in most night, sky, most night skies, are completely invisible. You won't see them. So the next star along is Polaris. So find that point there, make sure that your image has that within it, and when you take your images to get a star trail, it will circle around it. Okay. So from the images, I uh, managed to make a little video, which you probably saw at the beginning. Uh, I'm not going to show you how to do that. There are other videos out there that will help you with that just now. I don't want this to be far too long. All I was really doing is showing you how to take the one image and that's enough just now. But I'm quite pleased with that. It's a nice little video. I'll put a link at the end of someone who creates these things and you can go off and enjoy that. And I will see you again soon. I actually have my camera set up just now, taking pictures for another time lapse, which could be of great interest or sheer boredom to you depending on how you look at it but we are in strange times just now and we find all sorts of things to go out and photograph just to pass the time so until i see you again goodbye take care and remember stay in take photographs and have fun bye for now mm -hmm.